You're welcome back. I did tell you that we're going to be talking about something else, not what INEC is doing right now. We're talking about the seeming uh, continuing war in the PDP as uh, uh, PDP suspends presidential rally in Rivers. Wike versus Atiku, that's how we're just calling it. And to talk with us today is Opunabo in Kotaria. Welcome to the program, Opunabo. Okay. okay, we're also expecting Chidi Lloyd, Chairman Emoha, local government area of River State, to join us. But uh, until he does that, we're going to be talking with Ipunabo. Uh, Opunabo, rather. <laughs> I keep saying Ipunabo. I don't know why. Um, well, the PDP, or River State, rather, has always been a PDP state and a very strong state for PDP. And if not for the population, at least for the finances, PDP has always relied on River State for a lot of things. But now, like they say, Ch Chino Achebe would say, things fall apart and the center cannot hold. Is that a sign of what is to come that we are seeing from what happened in River State? What's really going on? Truth be told, I mean, it's just a question of um, a sore loser who is full of fire. I mean, let's take on that advisement the, the so called uh, advocacy for equity, fairness, and justice. So that our next peers will have a rudimentary grasp of what it's all about and to us to realize that the so called the most outed issue of equity fairness and justice is but the subject the real issue has to do with losing the presidential tickets and the comments made by IU when he dealt the Sobota State Governor, who stood down for a people that eventually led to the emergence of a people as the hero of the day. I want to start by the national election or convention took place, preceded the presidential election uh, convention. And at that convention, the Yosha you emerged as the chairman. His successor was from River State, whose removal of River State is not a conjecture, he said so on several occasions. It was architected by the governor of River State. And the Yosha you emerged. Now, that preceded the presidential election. And so, notwithstanding the measures of George Ayu, the delegates still went ahead to vote for Antiku Abubakar. What does that tell you? They are not really bothered about where the chairman and the presidential candidates come from. They are more interested in the bigger picture. Somebody with the gravitas to win the election. Somebody with the clout to win the election. And so, where the national chairman comes from, as far as they were concerned, was immaterial. Was inconsequential compared to the tax ahead. They failed to or they refuse to minimize the maximum and maximize the minimum. Because the issue of we are the national chairman and the presidential candidate is maximizing the minimum. The maximum is how to win the election. And after that, the governor of River State had said that he was going to support whoever emerges as the candidate of the party. 
As I told the sufferer, there was no cabinet. There was no promise. He did not say, I will support on, <coughs> excuse me, on this condition. He did not say that. And at that time, a people was in the race. He could have said, if it's not on in Mexico, then the national chairman must step down. Those conditions we are not giving. He just said, believing he was going to win at the presidential primaries. Even after he was bested at the primaries, when he got back to River State, he said to River people in addressing the stakeholders, which was well televised, that notwithstanding the outcome, notwithstanding the shortcomings, as a party man, he is going to support the uh, Atiku Abubakar as the presidential candidate of the PDP. So, the next question is, what then changed? Now, why is it that all of a sudden you are talking of equity, fairness, and justice? In terms of equity, even if today, you say, are you must go. Going by the PDP constitution, it is somebody from that zone that will succeed. At so, in other words, what you're saying, which she has also said, is that you must have a South Anna. For you to have a South Anna as a presidential candidate, there has to be a convention. The question then is, do you have the luxury of time to conduct another convention? Or are you going to go extra constitutional, which is illegal, to say, use South Anna, please? Come without a convention. Okay. Um, is that what you're going to do? Mr. Uh, so it is rationally inexplicable Up for Nabo. you to say a southern atmosphere. Excuse me, please. Is still alive, yeah? No, 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 not yet. But you you have to land so, so that okay. uh, we can. Mm. For you to say a southern atmosphere emerge, how? How will a southern emerge? It's not possible. There has to be a convention. Unless you're going to think with the Constitution. And you know there are procedural obligations if you have to do that. So, and when you consider the time, you don't have the luxury of time to show them. the target is winning the presidential debate. After that, you can table all your grievances and the party will look into them and based on the merits, address them. But you say no, are you must go. You have wanted on several occasions that you have been the one responsible for the removal of the other chairman. And do you think that your fellow governors are equally happy? What point are you trying to make? Are you trying to prove that BDP is in your pocket? You said you have spent so much. You have been financing the party. Did not believe finance the party? But Peter Dillon never got to see that. The man you said should go, he just tell you, is a founding member of the party. Atiku, a founding member of the party. Again, this is a party that has done so much for you that you can never in your lifetime pay back. Because it was on this platform he became a local government chairman, chief of staff, minister, and governor. It's like you. Say to your father, who trained you from nursery school to university, and you come back to say, maybe you built a house for him, bought a left, a Rolls Royce for him, and so on, and then, after all, I have been sustaining you. Without training, you would have achieved that. You are only trying to show gratitude at best. Okay. And because you are so, far, so, so to speak, sponsoring the past, does not mean everybody should be tied to your own prospects. Can, can we move on? And from, because from, Ayub from must this. not go, according to a faction, okay. Ayub, as in Ayub must go, that is where you have the problem. Okay. That is exactly that is the governor of the problem. Let us go to the equity penalty and justice. Okay. Like I said. Well, um, 
I'm now, not. If, who was the last presidential candidate? Or who was the last president of the country before Muhammad Mubarak? It was good luck, Jonathan. Okay, can I can I just can I just air my concerns now? Okay, let me let me express my concerns now. Can you hear me well? I don't know if you have a fan on or something because there seems to be some noise, but we can get you tolerably. Um, if you can hear me well, my concerns for this discussion today it did not really focus on Wiki. Yes, he is the the protagonist or antagonist, depending on where you stand in this uh, whole thing. It is more on uh, what the PDP stands to gain or to lose by the seemingly inability, the seeming inability to resolve the issues within. But in your talking, you raised a lot of things that sounded like PDP is only or usually only thinks about the end as something that justifies the means no matter what it is. So I'm asking simply, when you were writing your constitution, were you writing for the party or for the good of the country? I tell you why I ask this. Now, if APC, for instance, has a candidate from the North and PDP comes and they say because they want to win and there's a candidate from the North, and then after that, they lose again to the APC, and the candidate of the APC comes from the north. And it comes back to BDP because it is, not, uh, it, is, it is not you who fielded the candidate. You still go back to the north. It doesn't concern you that even though the party that fielded a candidate that is leaving the office is from a particular region, if you take that same region to be your candidate or the president from your party, it is going to worry the people of Nigeria. Was it just to get the gains of winning an election or you had the people of Nigeria in mind? Because that's a concern for us. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, well, I'll address it then. We're going to the fortunes of the party, like the right nation. Now, let me state this. I'm not a member of PDP. I'm not a member of any political party of SPP. Now or ever. So I try as much as I can to be a subjective. I'm voting for candidates across party lines. Okay. It depends on your dissident and your perception, my perception of you. That's the truth. Now, I will say this. Every party has its own constitution. Every party has its own modus operandi. Now, as at when the PDP, I strongly believe, when the drafter drafted that constitution, they did not say if a candidate, uh, a sitting president is from the north, the next person must come from the south, whether that president was uh, from another political party or not. That couldn't have been the reasoning. Why I said that couldn't have been the reasoning is simple. You have a candidate from the north contesting on the platform of let's say this. You also have a candidate from the north contesting on the platform of the PDP. At the same time, simultaneously, if after that time the national, for example, had just succeeded the sitting president. And that Northerner is from is, is, uh, from APC, and you have the PDP man who the last time he was a Southerner and needed to fill the I What are you going to say? Are you going to say, oh no, because uh, uh, the Northerner in APC, if he is by his time in South South is dead, it's other should go to the South. Therefore, you Northerner from the PDP don't contest. Let the Southerner contest. You're not going to say that. Because you draft your constitution, you did not put into consideration other political parties. You did not. That is number one. Number two, in this particular instance, only the Southeast, it's only the Southeast that has not produced a candidate or hold the country. And what was the agreement? They formed a committee, a zoning committee, 
that zoning committee was in flesh. And I think himself said, if it is zoned to the southeast, I will not contest because it will prevent offense. But if it is not going to be zoned to the southeast, I will contest. But every other zone has produced a precedent, and which is correct. So why wasn't it zoned to the southeast? The whole thing was really subtle. Obi had to leave the past, and it was not zoned to the southeast. And the other committee that was formed now left it open, which was which is the uh, was uh, was the governor's name again? Very state governor. Yes, it's open. And when you leave a a, a ticket open, you are saying everybody is qualified to contest. That's the interpretation. And so, if a candidate emerges from that contest, it shouldn't be a problem. It should not be a problem if you had said. No northerner should contest. And somebody, because he's obdurate, because he's obstinate, decides to contest and wins. You say, no, I decided. But well, you've thrown it open. And since you've thrown it open, everybody's qualified to contest. Okay, understood. So, so the fortunes the of the party now. They of are. whether Atiku, sorry, of whether Buari is a northerner. Therefore, another northerner should not be met. As far as the PDP is concerned, the last man who ruled before Buhari, I don't like using the word rule because it's a civilian democracy. The last man, Buhari's predecessor, is it not from the South? So if you also go in equity, fairness, and justice, no South cannot. South South, no somebody, nobody from the South South to live in attempt to confess. If we have to go by that, if it, they should allow just somebody from the Southeast to confess. It must be micro zone to the Southeast and not the South South. Because good blood, Jonathan, is from the south south. So it's to be my close to the south east. So okay. all those who from the south south who equally uh, contested okay. are as guilty as somebody from the north who contested. Okay. Because the ordinary those that I just said, let us my zone it to the south east. I have I have heard your yeah, argument. You so let's go to the fortunes of the party because you know okay. no matter what, if you have a stubborn child, for instance, in your family, you can't like our people say you cannot throw the the child with the bath water. So now that yeah. it seems PDP is not able to resolve their issues, uh, what are the fortunes of the party? Just briefly, so that we can wrap up this segment. Well, the truth about it is, um, of course whether you like it or not, attrition in politics is not, it's not a good sign, it's not a good omen. Because politics is all about majoritarianism. So every vote, especially with the people, every vote will count. And so if you have a reduction in number, it's a minus. But the question is, will that minus affect the fortune of the party? I can tell you categorically that even in River State that people will Look at Oyo, you saw the last turnout, the conference <coughs> when I took you went there. Even in, in Benue, in, in other states, you saw in Benue, they were well received. The only difference is that the governors who are members of the G5 did not come out. But their wives even came out. They were entertained by even their wives. And are you going to tell me that those wives are not going to vote for Atiko? They are not going to ask their supporters to vote? The only difference is that in, in River State PDP, for example, the votes might be divided because some who are extremely loyal to the governor will not want to vote for him. But I can tell you that even some who are working with him and those he thinks are even loyal to him will still vote for him. He might, if a people would have had 100% in River State, they might have 60 to 70% in River State. That's the difference. But that is going to win. River people are adrenalized. I tell you, it's going to win. But probably not the number All right. that the river people usually give to the PDP presidential candidate. But if it's to win, it's going to win. Okay. And ditto other states. Okay, open up. Thank you so much for uh, both giving us a historical okay. background to what is happening and giving us uh, this optimism that you have you have told us about the PDP. It's good. I would only say good luck to the PDP everywhere else, not just River State. Thank you so much for being a part of the program. 
My pleasure. Thank you. Okay, we've been talking with Open Abo there, and uh, he was telling us what is happening in River State. We'll take another break. When we return, we'll be joined by Olutayo Iratiola, author, youth advocate, and patriot. Stay with us. <laughs>